folks. So stand by for the new stream here. We'll see what happens and see if this works. We're having technical difficulties here getting this live stream going. And this was a new one. This was a new difficulty. Stand by for the new stream here. Okay. All right, so we've started a new broadcast. Hopefully folks will will realize that we have a new broadcast started and hopefully they will be able to come in here. All's good so far. Triforce Rich in the house and Williams Watches is in the house. Hopefully everybody will come over. Our Wags is in. This was a very strange situation here where where I actually had to stop the other broadcast completely. Oh, stand by a second. Hey, Google, turn on living room lights. So, so I couldn't restart the broadcast, and I pro apologize for the moire on this shirt. It has a very fine pattern to it, but it is what it is. I had to rush to get this broadcast going anyway. I got back a little bit later than I thought. What about a crocodile strap? We're going to talk about this. Uh, we're going to talk about this whole strap issue because this is becoming a real issue and it's going to take time to resolve this this situation and we're going to need some help. So we're going to ask for some help from some experts and see what we can do. And then there are other issues and Joey made a comment in the chat. I noticed on the other chat before I restarted this show that some kids were getting COVID-19 in New York. So I don't know what that was about. Of course kids would get it. It, does he mean a bunch of kids are dying from it? Because if that's true, that's that's some real news because usually they are not susceptible to it. So do expand on that information if you come back in, Joey, uh, because that would be interesting information if if that is happening. I haven't heard anything about that. This would be new news. Or maybe it is, as others have said, fake news. So that's possible. A bunch of people are coming in the house. Uh, they're finding the new stream good. That last stream continued for a little while, Williams Watches. Yeah, I had to delete it. I think I deleted it. Steve had a unlisted stream going. I don't know if he had been testing something and then he forgot to end it and he left it going. And that caused a communication snafu with getting the other one restarted. So I had to delete his and then I had to create another one and so it was a cluster, you know what. So I gotta tell him to be sure to end those events when he, if he does a test, he needs to end those events because he can't just leave them sitting there live in the, stu in the studio because that causes some issues here with, with this sort of thing. Um, I hope the other stream is gone now. I hope it's done, but in any event, well, I'll take a look at that. I'll revisit that after this stream finishes. Triforce Rich is in the house. Craig, give Lance your 005, and you will not have to say, hey, Google anymore. Lance, turn on the damn light. <laughs> well, yeah, if Lance will come over here and take care of the lights, uh, that might be a good trade. And uh, let's see here. Uh, Rich is here. Craig, uh, ready when you are. Okay, so Rich is ready to call in to talk about this strap issue. And first, before I do that, I'm, I'm going to show this strap that we were talking about yesterday. And this isn't the one like he bought. He bought the one with the more pointy end. But anyway, go, go ahead and um, <clears throat> Rich, uh, what's going on here with this? Hmm, it's not the screen I normally see. Go ahead and try to give me a call, and let's see if this rings through okay. Go ahead and give me give me a call through on Skype, and let's see if this works, because now my Skype, Skype screen doesn't look quite the way it was. Joey has been brainwashed by the fake news, Triforce Rich. Um, Tom is in the house. I have the doubt uh, if I might have been too dry before answering your question regarding your collection. I was sleepy. And it was not my intention. You know, my opinion is follow your heart. Carlos is a nice guy. I won't be a nice guy. I'll give you the straight scoop on your, quote, collection. If you've got issues, I'll, I'll do an intervention because too many people, you know, go along with the program and, and, uh, and don't intervene. And, and don't help people. There's a lot of bad information out there. I was just noticing a post earlier today on one of the watch forums. Just, just 
just some really bad advice on some ugly watches. And then one guy had a had a. Uh, and by the way, we should do a little bit of an intervention on Rich because he's got too much steel at this point. Now he, I don't think he has a gold stunner in his collection. We're going to have to talk about that and see if he's got a gold stunner in his collection because I see a lot of these, quote, collections with a whole bunch of steel and nothing, uh, no, no, no gold stunners. So that's an unbalanced situation. And Tom says, no worries. Uh, that's good advice. Now I am sleepy right now. Tom's in the house. Craig, are you buying that GS strap on eBay? Lance, he doesn't have the one that I want, uh, so no, I'm not going to buy this one. I did write him a message to see if he can get the correct one, and I haven't heard back from him, and we're going to have some more discussions with Rich. Oh, here, he, he added me, so let me see if I can. Oh, I'll accept, so hopefully this way he'll be able to call in. Oh, let me just click on the movie camera here and see if that works. See if that calls him. See if that works. Okay. I think that worked. All right. So, Rich, are you there? Yes, Craig. I'm here. How are you today, buddy? Okay, good. Now, I can't see your camera. Make All sure right. your camera's turned on. And then I'll switch to you because right now I'm seeing me. Okay, yeah. now I'm seeing you. Okay, perfect. Excellent. Oh. Good picture, too. Are you using oh. your phone or your laptop, or what are you using? I'm using my iPad today. Okay. It's working good. It's working good. Um, do you have any kind of a mount for it, or are you just kind of holding it there? I'm putting it in a little resting pad. So oh, good. It's perfect. Got a perfect. Angle, but it allows me to be hands-free, so perfect. I can hold That's what we need. That's what we need. So so here's the thing. I'm. This is really getting to be an issue. And I, I talked to Steve about this a little bit, about this whole strap thing. And what we really need is we need somebody, we, we probably need to get a panel of experts together and really dive deep into this conversation because I think these straps should absolutely be made of high quality alligator. I agree. And I think they should have a, a liner that is also gonna hold up well. And I think they should be stitched all the way around with a high-quality polyester thread so that they won't come apart. And I think that they should be the exact size that they need to be to work in these deployment clasps. And so we need to find somebody that is reliable that can actually make these straps at not an exorbitant price, but at a reasonable price, but, but super high quality, so that we have an option for buying these straps from somebody that we can trust, that we know they're absolutely going to fit and absolutely going to be the correct strap. Th does that make any sense? It does, Craig. And, you know, I, I sold straps on the Internet for about 15 years. Mm -hmm. And um, I always had an interest in watches. Uh, you know, I'm certainly a collector like you are. Mm -hmm. And um, I was fortunate enough to uh, work directly with Hadley Roma, mm -hmm. who's located uh, just north of, of where you are or where I think you have a house in Sarasota. Yes. Uh, they they are located in Largo, Florida, which okay. is in Pennsylvania County. Okay. So I approached them about 20 years ago and um, asked them to make me a, a Navitimer-style all-polished bracelet. Mm -hmm. And um, I was able to get those bracelets for about 11 bucks a piece, and they sold as high on eBay for about $250 mm -hmm. when the Navitimer bracelets were selling for 1000 Mm -hmm. So that kind of started my relationship with them, and I started selling um, quite a quite a few watch bands on eBay. So I was their their first customer to, because they didn't think that that watch straps would sell outside of the retail jeweler environment because mm -hmm. you know they had to be mounted on the watch. Sure. So um, what I noticed is you know they had the factory downstairs in the basement. And um, more and more as the years went by, they would source their product out to, uh, to China. Mm -hmm. But I think, as I mentioned to you in the email, when it comes to um, exotic skins, it's, uh, it's, very, it's, it's a customs nightmare. 
uh, for them to export uh, crocodile, alligator, mm -hmm. whatever it might be, mm -hmm. then to get those things made and then to bring them back into this country. So they kept a small force uh, mm -hmm. locally. Now, David is in the uh, chat, David Williams, uh, and, and he bought a strap on eBay from the same seller that you bought a strap from. Oh, and, that's good. And, um, and David, by the way, if you would like to Skype in and join the conversation, you're more than welcome because you have some, some firsthand knowledge as well. Okay, so, so, so getting back to these straps, these specifically the Grand Seiko straps, it seems to me that there's a market for these straps if they were everything I just described, if they were the correct size, ready to go on the watch, and they were available in a couple of different lengths, depending on your right. wrist size, okay? Right. And just the major colors, like dark brown, black, maybe dark blue, and, and then in a couple of sizes. So, so not a, not, you don't need to have a huge selection in stock, right? Just, just a few basic colors. And then I think that what, what could also be done, and, and correct me if I'm on the wrong track here, though, is you could have different grades of them based on the part of the hide that they use for the strap. Because some people don't care about the big scales and, and paying a premium you know, for the bigger scales, and they might w be willing to pay a little less and get one with not the, those premium scales. And that way that the technician could use more of the hide and if they're in the U.S. and they're using a U.S. alligator hide, they don't, they're not going to have any import and customs problems on them. Now, they can't sell them to California, I understand now, but they should be able to sell them everywhere else, I would think. The, the, well, I th does that make any sense? Yeah, it does, but I think you, this is what you'll find interesting. When mm -hmm. I used to go to the factory, I would see the entire alligator skin laying on the floor mm -hmm. with a price tag on it. Mm -hmm. It had already been through its processing, and mm -hmm. it had already been through the tannery, so to say. Yes, yes. So it was ready to be put on the dye press. Yeah. So when you're talking about somebody making a custom strap, mm -hmm. it really doesn't matter now. They've already paid for the skin. Mm -hmm. you, you may request, like when I used to go to the factory, I would always try to get somebody the large square tiles because I knew that that was the preferred strap. Mm -hmm. But certainly mixed into that bunch were were straps that were made from the sides of the alligator. Mm -hmm. And those that's where you see the small pebble grain. Yeah, so now, but but my point is they could they could price them differently. You know, they could have you could have a dark blue with the smaller pebble and Yeah, um, there there'd really be no reason for that premium because the same amount of work is going into it. I guess I guess, you know, again it's Well, but but if people customer. don't if they're not as desirable people are theoretically not going to be willing to pay as much. They're going to all want the, the more desirable ones if they're all the same price, right? So then he would be sitting there with a bunch of the small grain ones that people don't want. So I, I think you're going to have to price them differently to, to, to address that, to, to try to get the most out of the hide. Because the point Steve made was, well, you know, there's only certain portions of the hide that are going to yield that high-quality strap, that look that people want. And then the rest of the hide, basically, they got to figure out something else to do with it, make a wallet out of it or whatever, right? Yes, I, I even brought to show everybody I have an alligator belt that has been put together by three pieces of alligator to give the total length needed. And you can see, as I will spread it across the camera, how different that hide gets. So, I mean, you, you can have just about any kind of different look possible that you can imagine. But yeah, I have I have several um, alligator, and then I've got some that are made of caiman, which is of course much lower quality, and right. you definitely don't want a strap made of caiman. Now, the, from my research, the um, some of the crocodile hides, like for example, the saltwater crocodile hide, some of them can be pretty high quality, from what I understand. Um, well, so there. We, we talked about yesterday or the day before you were talking about, you know, everything being in the crocodile family. Mm -hmm. And it's kind of funny that we, we kind of say that, like in Europe, they call alligator crocodile. Mm -hmm. And in America, we like to call crocodile alligator, whatever. But uh, cr alligator is a freshwater uh, a species mm -hmm. of animal. Sure. And crocodile is a saltwater species. 
And you were right the other day when you stated, hey, you know, I'm looking at the grains uh, or these tiles and I'm seeing these, you know, where I'm supposed to see hairs or something. So well, the I... poor, the poor, and I don't see it on mine where, 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 that, where there was that hair coming out that it, it's a sensory thing, right? And then when it's... they tan it and all, the close-up pictures that I've seen of hides have literally shown little round hole like a pore. Not, right. n you know, not a, 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 like a wrinkle or whatever, you know, but a, a, literally a little round hole. Yeah, and it's called I, a dimple. I, I have not seen that on my strap. I looked as close as I can with a loop and a magnify. I took macro photos, and I just don't see it on mine. Yeah, well, I took a jeweler's loop on mine to be sure mm -hmm. because I didn't want to give you any misinformation. Put your hand behind it so that it'll focus on your hand. Uh, to put it right behind the leather, and, th and then we'll get it to focus on that because it's trying to focus on your face. Um, and didn't get as close as you can to that camera, to the camera itself. Yeah, there we go. But again, we're not going to be able to tell because I've, you know, like I can get. I can get some light on it. Yeah. Well, but what you're saying is, now this is the one that you bought from the, the gentleman on eBay, correct? From Matsuko. And, 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 and what you're saying is, you examine that closely. Okay, we're going to merge this call in, David Williams. Um, you examine that closely, and you're, and you're of the impression at this point that that does have the, the telltale signs of the pores. Yeah, I can tell you for sure now that this is genuine crocodile. Okay, and that's what and that's what David David had the same results when he examined his. He thought that he also saw the pores. Now, David, can you describe the pores that you saw on yours? Did they look like little round holes, or did they look like? Well, tell, tell us exactly what they look like, because we're not going to be able to see it on the screen here, but tell us what they uh, look like. Well, you need a loop. Um, yeah. I, hi, everyone. Um, so I uh, looked through a loop, and I read your, uh, you know, I read the uh, website discussion that you recommended. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and so I looked for the holes, and looking at them in the... Uh, in the you know with the loop I, I saw them and they were just little round holes on each scale now are they in the same location on each scale like in the upper corner no or they're in different locations different locations and they're and you you actually think they look like a perforation like an actual hole through the leather yeah yes huh. I do. well now what, what's confusing me now is that you saying that they're in different positions on the scales because what the photo that I saw they're generally in the same spot on similar scales. So this what is interesting. Hole? We're getting new. Hey, Craig. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Uh, go ahead, uh, Rich. Yep. Mine, mine are in the same spot. They're, they're at the top of the scale in the center. And as a matter of fact, with close inspection with a mm -hmm. jeweler's loop, mm -hmm. on one of the scales with the little dimple in it, I actually saw what was left of a hair okay so even during the process mm -hmm. they were not able to remove the entire hair so that's what okay. what what led me to believe for sure and yep. then i made a comparison to some genuine alligator straps which i i still have some old inventory of mm -hmm. i even have a paddock philippe um genuine alligator strap okay if anyone paddock philippe and mm -hmm. that's genuine alligator okay and let me tell you, the the alligator is night and day difference con to, compared to the crocodile. Night and it's day. Inter it's interesting because I'll tell you, I wonder if the one that I have on wrist right now, I wonder if this one is alligator and the ones that this guy is selling on eBay are croc. Well, I well, wonder. Re remember you and I talked about this. Remember the original strap that came with mine which I told you was a little too long mm -hmm. yep this has the small pebble grain if you guys can see okay this. I got it yeah now have you examined that one closely does that one have the pores no pores no so pores Craig on the pebble grain so yours Craig. so you go ahead David I, I'm sorry to interrupt I was just going to say I just examined my uh, my strap again and they do look like 
I want to correct what I said. They do look like they're actually in um, in somewhat of the similar place on each scale. Good, because yeah. that's the way they're supposed to be. You know, okay. um, and when I feel mine, when I I'm going to take mine off wrist here. When I feel my strap, when I when I feel the the scales, I can feel you know that the that they're three D. I can feel that they're there, but it's very smooth. It's very, very pliable. The whole strap is very pliable, very smooth. And it's got all the telltale signs of, of being alligator. Well, let's face it, Greg. You know, uh, whether it's crocodile or alligator, you're at the top of the heap. It's just that alligator has just that slight extra premium on it. Even in ladies' handbags, they what they shoot for is to take the the navel or you know of 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 the belly of the beast mm -hmm. and put that in the center and on an alligator it's more of a spider like uh, yeah. look i i i hear what you're saying but i from what i everything that i've read there's there's only a few types of crocodile hides that rival the quality of alligator the the saltwater croc down in Australia, there's just a couple of species of it that get close. But even the the experts that that I've read talking on the subject have said that even those the alligator trumps them. So alligator is right at the top as far as desirability for for making anything, whether it be a watch strap, whether it be a wallet, whatever. Alligator is the top of the tier. That's what they want to work with, and that's what that they get the best results with. So I think where we should head with this whole thing is we should try to find a source, someone that will will make the straps, because Steve is willing to retail them if we can well, find I'll, a source. I'll tell you something. I had a guy, because since I, I bought the stainless model mm -hmm. of what you have. Yes. By the right. way, well, I want to talk about your collection next. I want to see, find out what watches you have, and we want to talk about your collection Okay, so anyway, so go ahead. So I was able to get this one, and I decided I wanted to dress it down and give it a more casual look. Okay. So I found the custom strap maker on eBay, mm -hmm. and he actually had to make me two straps because remember the tight tolerances we talked about with the uh, deployant. Yes. I was not, when I bent it and folded it over, mm -hmm. the edge painting. And this is what all you guys have got to take a look at. See, there's there's something called Rembrode, mm -hmm. where the actual skin is folded underneath the strap mm -hmm. and sewn. And then there's another type where it's just cut and padded, stitched, and then they actually use an edge paint. Yeah. And they cut the edge of the strap. Which, that edge which, paint is the yeah, problem. Yeah, we don't want that. Yeah, we don't want that. And that that's why we need to find someone that can really do the correct, high-quality job, stitch it well, properly. Well, this guy could. And, and so I paid about $170 for this leather custom strap. I ordered it with a single keeper mm -hmm. because I have smaller wrists and I had the deployant that already had the metal keeper on it. So mm -hmm. I figured... You know why have two one one fixed and one floating keeper? Mm -hmm. And again, he told me he did the Rembrode, but it came with the painted edges, and it worked. He was able to make the second one flat enough to fit through the deployant. Um, but does but it, it still is, have the painted edges? Even the second one? Yeah, it okay. still has the painted edges. So we've edges. got to find a better source, and and also, and here's the thing. I don't want to find a source that is going to make these custom one-off straps. I, what, I, what I'm looking for is somebody that can just make X number of dark blue ones and a, and a, a larger the size, the size that mine is right now, and maybe a little bit smaller size, and then, you know, make some in dark brown, make some in black. So, in other words, we order, you know, 50 straps from them or something, right? And we get, we get them wholesale so that Steve can have some margin and and you know so it makes sense doing it because well, because I think I think these are needed. I think people need to have a source 
for these high quality straps and not at an exorbitant price, you know, at, at something approaching what this gentleman is selling on eBay, you know, around the $200 price range. Because I think if you get up at four or $500, that's just getting to where it's just not practical. Agreed. But that's I agree gonna, with that. That's going to be your problem. I mean, when you go down like to these the, this factories and you see what's involved in making these straps, there are, are a lot of man hours involved. Mm -hmm. And you're looking, I can remember 10 years ago looking at the price of the hide at the wholesale level. They were paying six hundred and twenty-five dollars for you know uh, for one hide of alligator. What length hide so you, do you know? Was it, well, what? you know they try they try to get them a little on the young side, even though they looked mm -hmm. full size to me. They mm -hmm. looked like about four or five foot alligator skins. Okay. okay. But they try to get them on the young side because what happens is as an alligator ages, mm -hmm. he rubs his belly against rocks and other things. And then it scars up the skin. Okay. So, so, the, so okay, I understand. So, okay, let's say a five-foot-long, four-foot-long skin. Let's say a four-foot-long skin. Do you have any idea how many straps they can get out of that? Um, about 50. Okay, okay. So, so let's say you get 50 straps out of it, and you're asking the guy, let's go black, let's go brown, and let's go navy blue. Because you know all of you know we've got these blued second hands. Mm -hmm. You're talking about a sizable investment. Then he's got to have the you know the die cutter to cut them. Then mm -hmm. he's got to you know there's other parts involved, including padding. He's got to know the dimensions very specifically. And Craig, like you said the other day, you know we're dealing in a world with everybody having a different watch strap uh, or wrist size. When I first started in the business, yeah. The tip of size was seven and a half inches and when i ended the business it was seven and seven eighths of an inch uh, yeah. a, a strap end to end excluding buckle and now we're sitting here saying hey i'd like a strap a little shorter yeah well and, and but see that would be the good even if well let's say even if steve stocked three different sizes like a small medium and large that that would get people a lot closer than what's available now What's available now is is a real problem, and and and, and what's available now is very limited. Period. I've 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 noodled around a bunch of the websites that sell straps, and most of them aren't even the correct type, um, and, and much less the right size, um, and 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 not that many are even alligator. A, a lot of them are other materials. So I just think there's an opportunity here, especially with the amount of unemployment that we have right now in these United States. I just think there seems like there might be an opportunity here to to make a bunch of these things. It seems like to me the market is there. I mean, you guys both bought one. I'm I'm interested in buying one. There, we can't be the only ones that want, I agree. that want to buy these straps. So that's how I really got into the business because Hadley Roma had a custom strap division. They have mm -hmm. since closed that down, so that might tell you something. Now, so they have an area okay, where now, they would make Durr is links. talking about the straps out of Vietnam. We see them, and we see them all at low, very low prices. And Durr is saying hdstraps.com is a guy out of Vietnam who makes amazing leather goods, mostly watch straps, cases, belts, and even makes shoes. Any leather you want, um, beaver, toad, lizard, python, gator, etc., I mean, I I really would rather obviously do business with somebody in the U.S. if I possibly can, but if 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 it gets to the point where they're substantially less, and you buy a gross of them from a guy like that, you know, you buy three or four hundred straps made to spec. Now I don't know. Do you really think a guy like that can do the quality that we're talking about? No, no way. Um, Okay. Um, if I might uh, say something mm -hmm. real quick, there there is uh, a an issue with uh, customs. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, with uh, there's something called CITES or C I T E S, mm -hmm. and it uh, governs the import of exotic leather yeah. leathers, and it's around the world. I don't think okay. it's just uh, it may only be, it may not well, only be the United ho States. Hopefully, 
hopefully the word will get around and somebody will watch this video or whatever, and hopefully somebody will come out of the woodwork and say, hey, you know, I'd be happy to buy a, a dark blue, a bra dark brown, and a black hide and, and wholesale a bunch of, of, of straps to you guys. Hopefully, well, I'll tell you what, I'll do my part. I still have that contact mm -hmm. because I sold the business to a friend of mine. I'll get them the hides. Mm hmm yeah. I'll get them the hides if they've got the sewing machines and are willing to do it. Mm -hmm. But okay. uh, you're 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 you are talking about uh, you know a, a real setup, of, you know. So we, as a watch community, we'd have to make a real commitment to these people. Mm -hmm. And let's face facts: in 19 millimeters is an odd size. Yeah. Well, is. well, this would be th these would really be specifically for Grand Seikos. It would be the uh, idea I, here, I, and, well, and what what we would do is we would market them as being exclusively available through Little Treasury Jewelers, and he'd keep them in stock and in three sizes, you know, small, medium, and large, and the colors, you know, the three colors we just talked about, and they would be specifically for, primarily for these these Grand Seikos with deployant clasps. Now, let me ask you a question about the deployant clasp, and then I want to get on to your collection. The deployant clasp, there's two different styles of deployant clasp. There's the one like I have that's that's made in Italy, okay? And I think the one that you guys have is different. It correct? is different. I noticed that when I looked at your picture. Now, is the, so would the strap have to be different? Well, mine, mine says Seiko Stainless Steel Japan on one side let me see your deployment can you hold it up to the yeah, camera mine, mine says that also then on the yeah. other side it says gs grand Seiko. now but yeah but it it fastens the same way correct the way the strap feeds through and then there's a pin no 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 that it doesn't fa fasten the same way um well let me let me see the short side of the strap where it connects to the deployment the short side it just goes with a straight pin going through, right? Yeah. So as long yes. as that's the same width, as long as that's the same width, and as yeah, long the as the eight. as long as the clearance is about the same going through the other end of the strap, which it looks like it probably is, it would probably not matter which deployment clasp they have. If they have one like yours, or if they have one like mine, it, the, probably the straps are the same. It well, needs when I, 16 millimeters, it needs to be 16 millimeters at the bottom. I yeah, mean, uh, I think that's what mine right. is. I think that's what mine is, too. Be. Yeah, it when, should be. When I if spoke with Matsuko, uh, and, and, and before I bought this strap, because I didn't want to have a problem feeding the strap through the keeper, mm -hmm. I spoke to him about this issue, and he was very familiar with the exact deployment buckle that I had. So, um, you know... You do need somebody, you know, who's making these straps, who has one of these deployment buckles. So Steve or, or one of us would have to lend them the deployment buckle and let them have a go at it and make sure that they could get the tolerances right. Yeah. Because you've got to be on the tip side at about 2.8 millimeters, which means no padding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, they have to be nice and thin. And I like this. I like how thin they are. I mean, they're it's really nice. And, well, I'll, I, and I'll tell you another thing, uh, David. I think this strap is going to last. I think it's even going to hold up well in the summer. I, I, I just do not think this strap is going to fall apart. We're going to find out because I'm going to wear it all summer. I, I, you know, I never said that it, yours would fall apart. I said that what I like to do with my strap is not wear it in the summer but, because yeah, I but, live in the south. Yeah, other, other people have said basically that, they, that they'll just fall apart. You, they, you, well, you, I, I, don't, I don't agree with that, but yeah. uh, uh, I just like to use mine seasonally. Gotcha. So that's how I do it. Gotcha. As Craig, as you know, I've lived. I live here in Florida, mm -hmm. and I'm on the West Coast. And you know, uh, eight months out of the year, it's 98 percent humidity, mm -hmm. and the other months, it's 89 percent humidity. Uh huh. So, uh, and I've worn alligator for years and years and years, and they last and last and last. The that's only good. Thing to alligator, take a look at something like this. So, 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 assuming they're well made, assuming they're stitched properly to where they don't come apart, and right. the part that connects up at the pin, up at the case, 
okay, assuming it doesn't split there. I've seen some straps will, will split there where it wraps around the pin. Well, if, it's, if the spring bar is too thin, that's a mistake anyway. You should always be using the maximum diameter spring bar that you can for your watch. Yeah, but uh, all I'm saying is that's a failure point that I've seen. So assuming this doesn't fail there, I don't think it's going to come apart where it's stitched together. Um, I think it's going to hold up. So uh, th this may be yeah. this may be not as big an issue as I think if these straps yeah. last as long as I think they're going to last. Yeah. Craig, it really isn't because what I can tell you is it's you know it's like build quality. Mm -hmm. You know, you and I have you know you, when you look at a an iPhone and you say why does everybody buy an iPhone? And you say one of the reasons is because of the build quality. Mm -hmm. Well, that's that's the same that I can see on these Grand Seiko straps, whether they be alligator or crocodile. The build quality is of such a superior nature. In other words, whatever factory they're using to build these straps is doing such a fine job. They'll last us for years. So I the gentleman you. that, uh, by the way, I wrote him and asked him if he could get me the strap like you got. He doesn't have one listed for sale right now, and he hasn't responded yet to me. So I don't know if he's able to get another one like the one you have or not. Now, the one that you got from him, is it It's a little bit shorter than the one that I have from the factory? Yes. Uh, as I um, um, wrote you, for some reason... Uh, I don't know whether it's because of, you know, the Grand Seiko straps that come with the prong buckle mm -hmm. versus the ones that come with the deployant. Mm -hmm. You know, if you've seen most of these watches when they come to you from the factory, mm -hmm. they have the deployant mounted the opposite way. Mm -hmm. So the tip yeah. side is facing your chest. Yeah, I like that. And, I like that myself because that right way now, it's not facing the other person that you're talking to. Right. Now, yeah. I personally don't, so I flipped mine around. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's just personal choice. Sure, sure. But making the assumption that that's why these two Grand Seiko straps are of different length. So the one I bought on eBay, it does have a notch for a tang buckle. Oh, okay. As the one that came with the watch and the deployant does not have a notch sure, sure, for the sure. tang buckle. Okay. Okay. So, yep. you know, the difference, as I mentioned, this comes at about 130 millimeters long, whereas the Grand Seiko replacement, with the, which is to be used with a Tang buckle, was only 110 millimeters long. That's, mm -hmm. 20, that's 20 millimeters difference. Mm -hmm. And they added that size or that length. They added 10 millimeters to the buckle side mm -hmm. on the one I got on eBay compared to the one that came with the watch. So actually, in my opinion, the buckle side, and that was the, another reason that I suggested not to uh, uh, purchase the strap on eBay that you mm -hmm. were showing yesterday, the brown. If you look at that buckle side, it's extremely short. Yeah, so but it's see, short. I don't know. I don't know if I want the short, the short person portion of this strap I don't know if I want it to be any different length because my my when I put mine on my clasp is pretty much centered it's pretty much in a good well, spot now yeah I'm, you see now the everybody's now, varies in design. now the long strap that could be shorter I'd survive yeah. if that was you know a centimeter shorter right that'd be fine right, uh, right. but but as far as changing the length of the other side, I don't know. I mean, to me, it could actually be a little bit shorter and it would work. If the other side was a little bit shorter, that would move the clasp that way a little bit. That would work. Well, that's, you know, this is the problem, you know. It's playing with the numbers. That's why when you talk about having somebody make these a small, medium, and long, well, you know, how long is the tip side? How long is the buckle side? Uh, should they put a prong slot on it so someone could use it with a standard buckle well, as well yeah, as a deployant? Yeah, well, yeah, I hear you. Um, but I think that if he just had um, three different lengths where both the short side and the long side was progressively longer, right? 
then theoretically the, the, the buckle would stay centered depending on the size of your wrist. If you have a smaller wrist and you buy the smaller one and both sides are shorter, it should stay centered. You see what I'm saying? And, and now obviously they're going to be oddballs that nothing's going to fit them. And then they're going to have to have it custom made. And maybe you have a price to, to have one custom made and it just takes longer. Um, but, right. you know, but he could stock some stock sizes. Um, anyway, we'll see how all this goes. But, okay, let's look at your – can we look at your collection real quick? Well, I've got the uh, the same um, – The 231. Okay, so that's right. a stunner. Hey, so, so, yes? Yeah, and, I'm sorry to interrupt. Yeah. I, you're, uh, at least when I'm uh, looking at it from my Skype, I, I have a split screen and I can't see what he's showing. Huh. So I don't know if you need to do anything with Well, they with can Skype. see it. They can def the, on the broadcast it's definitely going out. So we can see oh, both okay. of you, we can see both of you guys on the broadcast. Oh, and you then, can. Yeah. Okay. Then, yeah. All right. I have a little interesting surprise you're that cut, I thought I'd you're cut to off. To uh, you're cut off, David, <laughs> at the nose. So, but other than that, <laughs> you're not centered okay. on your camera. Yeah, now you're fine. Okay, so And then yeah. I, Go ahead, Ron. Um, I have a little surprise that I wanted to show you guys that came in today. Mm -hmm. oh. And um, let's see if we'll do a wristwatch check, see if you can recognize what this is. Some kind of a Panerai, right? Is that yeah, that it's is? pretty thin. It's only a 42 millimeter case. Mm -hmm. Okay. This is a 01144. Mm hmm. Okay. And this comes 42 millimeters, and this is navy blue. Okay. And it has a. I wish I could uh, show off the dial a little bit better. Yeah, it's hard. Yeah, but uh, I can see some blue peeking through there. Yeah. Now that that it, did it come with that strap that you have on it? Yes, it came with a genuine alligator strap. Okay. Now, um, how now? How thick is that? Uh. When you say, oh, it's only 11.8 millimeters thick, and it's a Good. manual wine P1000 movement with a 72-hour power reserve. The movement cool. itself is just a little over three millimeters. Super cool. Yeah, that's nice. I'm not a Panerai fan, but that's a nice one. That's a nice it's one. It's the first one I've ever had, and, you know, I've always stayed away from Panerai because they're mm -hmm. beasts, mm -hmm. and, again, I have a smaller wrist. Mm -hmm. But I was, I was, I've always loved the Radiomir look mm -hmm. because it's so simple, and it, and I love the sandwich dial. Mm -hmm. So you know, a lot of people complain that you know they only have a hundred millimeter, uh, I mean a hundred meter water resistance. But you know, I'm not doing any uh, jumping in the pool with this thing mm -hmm. and an alligator strap anyway. Sure, sure, sure. So, okay, you know, so the, the, all right, so you got that. You have the two, three, one. And let, let's see what other pieces you have. Or you don't have to show them all. You can just tell us the other pieces. Well, you know, I, one thing I wanted to mention is, you know, there's a lot of Rolex talk on mm -hmm. this forum. Okay. And, you know, of course, I, I, I have my sub. I have a Sea Dweller. Um, okay. Now, the sub, have, is it a super case sub? It is. Okay. It's, and it's you a have a Sea Dweller. Okay. And what year is, and the, sea, well, what year is the Sea Dweller? Uh, the Sea Dweller that I have is the 40 millimeter, which was only made for 30 months. Okay. So that is believed uh, to be in the future a collector's item. So what year? So that's what year is that one? Uh, it's 20, 2016. Okay. Okay. Got you. Okay. Um, they stopped making. Does that have red? Does that have red on the dial? No, okay. no, that's that's the change they made when they boosted okay. it to the 40 millimeter okay. case size. Okay, okay, all right, so we're good. Okay, so what, what other mod, what other watches do you have? Um, I've got a Bremont okay. with the compressor case, okay. you know, with day date. Okay. And I really love the internal bezel dial. Okay. Uh, that's a lot to use as a timer. All right. And then I have a uh, Omega... Um, uh, gray side of the moon, which is okay. actually a ceramic watch. Okay. Uh, but looks like titanium. Okay, I so got you. Okay. All right. What else? And then, of course, I have a couple of um, 36 millimeter date chests. Okay. One with a Roman, Roman dial and one with a uh, blue dial. Okay. 
And what else? Uh, one, what other Grand Seikos? Do you have an 05 also? I have. If you remember when we first uh, met, mm -hmm. um, I was very interested in that five star uh, Grand Seiko quartz. Mm -hmm. that was accurate to within five yep. seconds a year. Yep, yep. And I picked that up from Steve at Little Treasury, and that watch has proved to gain half a second in six months. There you go, yeah. Okay. Now that has a right. really nice metal beads of rice band on it. Oh, that's a stunner. Yeah, I love that watch. Okay, so, yeah. all right, so, so what else do you have? Um, you know, I, I, I do everything all the way down to Seiko. I mean, I, okay. I've, I've got some... All right, got but you know, you know what, you know what apparently seems to be a, a big hole in your collection? You know what seems to be missing? <laughs> well, I mean... I gold! I gold, my friend! Gold! You got way too much <laughs> steel! You've got a ton no, of I steel! I have a white I have a white band wedding ring. Well, but you can you can uh you can get a you can get an 18 karat gold wedding band <laughs> to go with a gold stunner. <laughs> but listen, no, seriously, seriously, you're heavy in steel. You're heavy, heavy yeah. in steel. So I'm only in white metals, yes. I would think I really about a couple of those I would think about a couple of those gold stunners, maybe putting a couple of them on the block uh when you can and and move into a gold stunner. Just one gold stunner. Every but every gentleman has to have one gold stunner. I just think they get a little too much attention, Craig. Nah, <laughs> just wear one. You'll you'll be surprised. They won't get any hey, more look, attention than anything else. I, 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 I'd love to. I'd love to put on the day date president, but it just gets too much attention. Well, you don't have to yeah. go for a president. You can go for something more like the 002 here. If you want to take it down a, a notch and not be quite as flashy, you, you can get, or even a, a Patek, or, or, you know, you can get something that flies a little bit under the radar. And and uh, with, with this watch, mm -hmm. I can keep it dressed up by wearing the alligator or crocodile strap. And I can also put this just regular leather strap on it and really dress it down. Mm -hmm. And let's face yeah. fact, one of the reasons that we are not seeing the surge in dress watches as we did years ago, and we've all gone more to sports watches, is because we don't wear suits and ties anymore. Mm -hmm. Everybody's wearing, you know, polo well, I mean, shirts. Or shirts I, I hear shirts. you. I hear you. But I'm not wearing a suit and tie, and this this O2 looks great. Trust me, it does. You're, you're, you're a unique guy. Right? <laughs> well, and and, I mean, and and dress watches. I mean, in the last uh, thirty or forty years, I mean, m most of the people I knew were also wearing sports Rolexes. I mean, there were a few that wore day dates, but uh, I, I knew almost no one that wore like a, a Patek or some other like dress watch with a leather strap. I mean, that was not common even then. Now it was common in the fifties and in the forties and in the thirties that, you know, most of the watches I think had leather straps, right? I think yeah, a and most bracelet. of the watches were gold yeah. or, or at least, or at well, least they were gold. Fit. They, yeah, they were. Yeah. Yeah. If somebody was successful, they had a gold watch, but yeah, still, still, they, they, millimeter watches. Yeah, they, they still, I don't think, were the majority. They were, the the solid gold yeah. watches were still for people that, b by the way, you guys should watch <laughs> that uh, series on Netflix, The um, uh, the Last Tycoon. It's good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's good. He's, he's, I, I, I just think we've become so casual. Yeah. I mean, even, you know, looking at the pen in your pocket, you know, mm -hmm. you've had that for a while, so that's mm -hmm. gold. Mm -hmm. But the pen that I carry in my pocket is a white metal clip. Mm -hmm. Yep. So, you know, that's that's just where the world is at today, Steve. You're you're, well, you're falling you're falling behind well, a bit. Well, friend. well, the the right. he, here's the thing, here's the thing. Um like I said yesterday on the channel and people were talking about how people dress these days and and things like that and and I'm like, "Hey, don't use the way people dress today as a, as an example. It's not a good example." <laughs> <laughs> Don't follow that. <laughs> Go and watch any old Cary Grant movie. Pick any of them, right, and see how he dressed. And that's that's uh, that's what you should do. Well, and that's you, because it, people used to be able to fit in normal clothes. It, Today, everybody wears a moo moo for their big guts. That's a problem. <laughs> that is a problem. 
Uh, and like I say, I'm hoping that this whole thing with this virus will get a lot of people to rethink that issue, too, and think about how they're taking care of themselves or not taking care of themselves. Okay, Durr says he sent me an email. Uh, Durr says he sent me an email that we're going to look at, and then I've got a bunch of comments i got to catch up on here. So anything okay, you guys want to say to wrap up, and let's do this. Let's, let's say, let's table this conversation and see what comes out of the woodwork and see what opportunities come, come along because Steve was agreeable to doing something uh, because he also sees that there is a, a need here. Um, well, so I'll secure the ends for if somebody wants to start to do it. If we can find somebody that can, can, can do the work. So let's keep our eyes and ears open, and maybe somebody will watch this, and, and we'll be able to figure, figure something out. You have to have a very special sewing machine. Let me just say that. These are not. Oh, it has to be somebody that's good. They have to be good because yeah. these things, the tolerances and everything, I mean, it, it's no right. joke. And if you look right. at the stitching on, on this, on this, if I look at the stitching on this, it is perfect. It is yes. perfect. I mean, it doesn't look like yes. some homemade cobbled together thing. I mean, it's well done. Yeah. Craig, there's that, uh, there's a the guy, Richard Ellis. I mean, Richard James, who's, you know, uh, at Steve's, I told you about him. Yep. Yep. He, he does bespoke uh, croc and alligator and all kinds of stuff. So. Steve said He's that he really done. wasn't doing that much in the way of straps at this point. That's what Steve told me. Oh, really? Yeah, oh, that he was okay. kind of getting away from doing the straps and doing primarily other leather goods. Um, oh, like, so, like but, wallets. But stuff. it might okay. be, you know, he might be a possibility. If um, I, I, looked, I, I, uh, I, I need to call, call him, so I'll, I'll tell you what yeah, I if you, find out, If too. you talk to him and tell him, I mean... Really, what we're trying to do is find somebody that wants basically a home-based business and wants to yeah. crank these things out and wholesale them to Steve. Right. Um, no, and that's what we're looking for. And I mean, let's say, just to throw out some wild numbers here, let, let's say that, you know, he, he got $100 a strap and Steve sold them for 200 I mean, I'm just throwing out a, a wild number here, right? I mean, if he can make the straps for a hundred dollars and make some money doing that if it makes any sense then that's a, a potentially viable thing and i think that everybody would win there assuming he can make them and make money at that price point uh i think everybody would would, would win uh, uh, so now if it gets to where he's got to get 150 per strap and then Steve has to sell them for 300 then it starts getting, you know, a little bit less attractive, I think. Yeah. So. Yeah. so well, that, that's going to be your problem, uh, Craig, because, you know, when you look at the price of the skin and then you look at the amount of labor involved and you look at, again, that 19 millimeters, you know, the amount of sales. I mean, you've got to think, what, what are the initial sales going to be? And remember, you're always going to have the customer who's going to say, I've got a Grand Seiko watch. I'm not putting any strap on it that doesn't say Grand Seiko. So even well, if it's yeah. got the quality, I mean, I'm yeah, I, just... I hear you. But if we got the rep, if the reputation got around that they're just extraordinary quality, now they would have to be all that in a bag of chips. Otherwise, this doesn't make any sense at all doing it. But let's say right. that let's say that they're every bit as good as this factory strap I have in every way and their alligator right there assuming this is croc which we're I'm still not 100% convinced of that but let's say this is croc in my way of thinking if it's alligator that's a step up right there so yeah, I agree so, with you. so in other words if, if everything if everything was at the same level quality wise and it was alligator right there we've got and 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 Steve if Steve gets somebody a, a Grand Seiko strap, I think he charges more than $200. Um, yes, and remember, you know, these alligators do, these skins come from here. They come from Florida, and they come from Louisiana. The alligator, yeah. the alligator farms are here in Florida. Yeah, well, exactly. So, I mean, if we could find somebody in Florida to make them, I mean, it seems like that makes all the sense in the world. Um Again, but it is. We've got to uh, Dudley too. Yeah, 
it, it is an art form. All of the, I can tell you this, when I used to go to the factory and I would go downstairs to the basement and watch all the women mm -hmm. making these straps, 90% mm -hmm. of them were from Cuba. Mm -hmm. Okay. There wasn't, there was, there was maybe one American. I mean, and you know, the other possibility, really, the, the other, we don't have anybody in the States okay. anymore, Steve, who has the ability to do what you're asking. That's, that's, that's why it's not happening. That could be the if problem. If there was a guy who could make a good strap, it would already be out there, Steve. Yeah. Okay. So here's I mean, the thing. Well, here's the thing. It, it, if somebody could set up a situation like that where they have two or three, you know, Cuban people, you know, doing the actual work and, and they're running the show. The other the other possibility here that would be really cool is, OK, you buy a dark brown strap to to for your Grand Seiko. And and hey, here's the price if you want a wallet to match it. And here's the price if you want a belt to match it. They could make everything matched that would be really we cool tried that we tried it we tried making wallets we mm -hmm. tried making card cases and we even went into the belt business mm -hmm. the belt business i sold maybe two or three belts over a period of a year the mm -hmm. uh credit card case maybe sold five or six they they, they just didn't sell yeah and i tried for years and years to sell them. The the desire that you're thinking of somebody wanting an alligator wallet like we used to when we were kids, that was always, you know, you and I look approximately the same age, mm -hmm. I think. Mm -hmm. But, you know, when we were kids you dreamt of having a nice alligator wallet. The people don't people aren't even thinking that way. And anymore, I, I still right? have my alligator wallet. <laughs> you do. <laughs> And I still have mine it, too. And it's it's holding up great. All right. Well, this uh, has been great. I gotta get. I'm gonna get to the comments here. I'm gonna let you guys go. And at least we got the conversation started. And maybe this will plant some seeds out there. And we'll figure something else out. Anything else to say, David? Do something together. No, I'm good. You good. I'm, I'm fine. Thanks right. for well, having well, me on. Well, th thank you all both for popping in. Yeah. Oh, okay. Miss Greg. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Greg. Sure, take care now. There you go, live on the channel. Uh, a quick phone call. It turned into quite a discussion. <clears throat> so um, let me get in here in the comments. And let's see. Uh, let's see. Um, Joey says, that's a bad idea, just Grand Seiko strap. That's a little niche market, like Shark Tank would say, you're dead to me. I don't know. There seems to be a lot of people buying them. We just had three people right right there together that all want them, and, and so there seems to be a demand, and there's a guy on eBay selling them, so I don't know. I don't know. And I, it seems like to me Steve could have a certain number in stock to meet the demand. Let's see. Um, oh, by the way, Joey, if you're still in there, what? Give us this this breaking news on kids with with coronavirus. Let us know what what uh, you you had some breaking news on that. Do share. Do share that breaking news. Let's see. Um, okay, you got an email. Oh, Eduardo, okay, you can call in next. You can call in. I'm going to show the email right now, and go ahead and call in, and I will answer it. And we'll do the live unboxing. Uh, oh, boy, I don't see the email here. Let me refresh. I'm not, I'm not seeing the email. Um, it did not come through. So you're going to have to resend the email. For some reason, it's not showing up. By the way, Bitcoin was pumping, folks. Let's see what this is saying now. Um, it's not fully refreshed. It's saying 9,300 there. But let me check on my phone here real quick because that's not refreshed. Yeah, 93.32. Wow, Bitcoin's pumping a little bit, folks. A little bit of pumping action on the Bitcoin. Okay, we're going to listen. Eduardo's calling in. 
see if we can get hey, him on the screen here. All right. Let me see. There we go. <clears throat> All right. We've got you on the screen. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. This is going to be exciting. We got 43 All live right. viewers and um, we're ready. What do you got? Here we go. Wow. Oh, the package. exciting. And I'll be careful about showing your, your address. Oh, no, that, that's that's the sender's address. Okay, you've already. Him. Okay, there you go. <laughs> Throw him under the bus. What the heck? All right. Oh, man, I like that knife is sharp. Yeah, I sharpened myself. Whoa. All right. Here we go. Don't cut your don't cut your finger. Oh, no. Okay. Nice. Nice knife. Nice piece. Yeah. fighting. <laughs> yeah, I like that. All right, let's see what we got. Live unboxing, folks, here on the channel. Oh, we put it upside down. Oh, there's, a, I see a crown. I see a Rolex crown. So take your time here. It's got it all wrapped up nice and... Oh, nice, that case looks good. Yeah. Case looks Let's see. good. Oh, oh got, there we go. And he's got it wrapped up a little bit. He's got an extra link yeah. in there. I think. Oh, there's a paper. Got some paperwork. Got two extra links. Cool, cool. Looking pretty good so far. Let's get that plastic off of that thing. Close our camera for you guys. Now that's interesting that it's got a a gold bezel, but it doesn't have a steel and gold bracelet. I guess the bracelet's been replaced. I don't know. Um, when I got my date chest at that pawn shop, it had the same deal: stainless steel bracelet, but it had the gold fluted bezel. Yeah, I think it probably originally came with a steel and gold bracelet, but. Could yeah, have been. They, they probably replaced it. But that's that's but okay. It, that's all right. That that that, that <laughs> clasp seems really tight. It seems that it, it closes. Good. Yeah, the the not much stretch in the no, bra in no, the band. No. It's very solid. Yeah, like I say, I think that's been replaced. Um, that that's a nice looking piece. Nice look. Are you thinking of this as an all arounder? Uh, no. I'm just like I don't know. It was about a thousand. Uh, one and a half thousand dollars sub market price. And I thought maybe I could flip it, keep it in a safe, maybe wear it, and then flip it and make okay, some money. Okay, so you think that might be a, 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 a little flip deal. Okay. And yeah, so you're going to yeah. find out how well it runs and all that. Now, it's a, is it a 36 mil or 34? It's a 34. It's okay. a OP date. Okay, Oyster Petrol date. Yeah. Yeah. That yeah. is cool. And it's running right there. Just that little bit of movement, it's yeah, running. Yeah, I think it. I think it's uh, it's got one of those uh, modern thirty one. Oh, try it on your try it on your wrist. See if it'll fit without those links in it. Now yeah, let's give it a shot. Take the citizen off here. Now, what size is your wrist? I have no clue. Okay. I just I just kind of measure it and size my watch size I need. I don't. Ooh, it's a tight. It's a tight. Well, it's a, it's a tight one. Yeah, Definitely you'd, have to, add, you'd have to add a link. Probably just one. You'll probably yeah. get by with one. Yeah. You'll have to figure but out. But it's interesting because... Well, well uh, if you're not going to wear it, it's a non-issue. Yeah. But, yeah. but man, that, that'd be a nice one to wear for a while. What other Rolexes I mean, do you have? Um, I have here my Datejust. I'll move this here. I'll leave this open here so you can see it. So here is uh, the day chest I found at the pawn shop. Okay. Outer box. Okay. And here's the inner box. It's all the paperwork. This is just the servicing I had done. Mm -hmm. Oh, you had it serviced? Yeah, not okay. by Rolex, by, okay. by a Rolex like trained watchmaker who gotcha. does independent okay. work. I'm with you, okay. Um, it came with the original hang tag. Good, good. So this is my watch. Oh, I like it. Now, do you wear that yeah. one very often? Yeah, I, I wear this one almost on a daily. Now, let me see the bracelet from the end. The end oh, yeah, it's not. It's it's it's, a, a, it's, a, is it, it's one of the, um, I, I want to see the end of the link. 
Show me the end oh. of the link. Okay, so they're solid. Okay, because the real early ones, they were like crimped around the the. Uh, oh yeah, no, no, the, the links themselves. Uh, these are the oval solid. But yeah, no, I mean, oh, that's cool. And, and what's interesting is that in here, underneath all this, comes uh, the warranty mm -hmm. card. Mm -hmm. You can see it was bought in July of 1970. Yep. And. With all this also came the original uh, chronometer sheet that would have been passed in Geneva, Switzerland. Oh, super cool. Now, yeah. now, how well does that watch run now after you had it serviced? Um, right now, I think it's running about plus six to seven and a half seconds. I have to take it in to get it regulated. So a day, that, that fast every day? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, so about a minute or so every week. Yeah, gotcha. Okay. Yeah. Well, at least, it's, yeah. at least it's fast, which means you can unscrew it and stop it and then get right back in sync. Yeah, and then I have to – I got to get him to switch a couple links because, as you can see, you it want, doesn't sit Yeah, centered. you want to center it. You want to move that a little bit, yeah. a little bit over, yeah. Yeah, yeah but those are but, my two but That's watches. a nice piece. I like that piece. Yeah. 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 There you guys go. All great, right. uh, great find during the Corona season. Yeah, yeah. Do some Corona buys. Yeah. I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. I'm. I've been picking up a few things here and there on eBay, little things, because uh, there's some deals out there now. There some, are some yeah, sellers. Some sellers want to move some stuff. Uh, yeah, that's what happened. That's my watch. Yeah. Yeah. All right, so anything else you'd like to add? No, I just wanted to do a live unboxing for the channel. There we go. Looking nice, good. Uh, safe queen. Lo looking good, absolutely. That's a nice piece. All right, well, you might want to put that link in and, and rotate it a little bit with the date just until you sell it. Might not be a yeah. bad move. That's a nice looking piece. Yeah, for sure. Yep. Yeah. I won't lose money for sure. I'll just make money at this point. No, you're going to be doing good there. All right. Well, thanks for calling in. All right. Thanks, guys. There you go, folks. That's how it works. Live on the channel. Live on the channel. A live unboxing. <clears throat> yeah. Okay. Let's see what else we got going on here. Um, Lewis says, strap links and location of the strap holes are made in standard size and location, but can be changed to suit the needs of the customer. Uh, Patek strap uh, Craig sent you an email yeah Dur, you got to send that again for some reason I didn't get that um, uh, Carlos says Patek straps for deployment are different than buckle ones too yes exactly they're going to be um, same with IWC okay uh, what's the worst watch w worst watch everyone in the chat has owned mine's got to be a tag <laughs> auto 200 <clears throat> I was considering to purchase the deployment for the 5196. I was ready to pay close to 3500 for it when I learned that I needed straps, too, at around $500. So I passed. I don't blame you. Tom's in the house. Carlos, if it would be daily wear, I'd go for it. Well, yeah, I'm sure. Absolutely. If you're wearing it a lot, you definitely want that deployment. This one, I love it. I love it for putting the watch on and off. I own an Omega Seamaster 120 from 1977. It was a nightmare to service. Hmm. Wonder why it needed service. Uh, let's see. Williams Watches is a giant uh, Pam. Okay. That Pam looks very good. Okay. I tried that. Okay. Let's keep going. That's the bit. Okay. Um, SD 4K. Nice. My favorite. Um, they also made it in quartz. Okay. Okay, quite a collection. I don't know. Seiko, okay. Gold, gold. Williams watches. I like gold, gold. Three gold stunners. Williams watches. Ron the Shrink. Ron the Shrink's in the house. Uh, let's see. My date just gets way too much attention from would-be criminals till they look at my face. Um, let's see. The sweet spot is something that looks... Great casual and can be dressed up for the occasion like a Rolex o OP or Explorer 1. Yeah, but a Rolex OP or Explorer 1 ain't gonna, 
ain't going to replace something like this gold stunner. Let me tell you something. It's not even in the same ballpark. Time check, folks. Time check. Been going for a little bit more than an hour. I put the, the the exposure down a little bit so that we can looks a little bit better on the coloring, especially on the Grand Seiko. Still can't get the coloring exactly right on the white balance here. SBGA 092 made six years ago. 18 karat gold snowflake at 39 mils. Come on, GS, you made one six years ago. Let's have more sub 40 millimeter spring drives. Interesting. Interesting. I didn't know they did that. <clears throat> um, let's see. Now they do have a spring drive that's 39 mil. The, the the I think their entry level one I think is 39 mil. Uh, so there you go. Uh, let's see what else. Our wag says, "Hey Ron, the shrink." <laughs> um, let's see here. <clears throat> Uh, everything just jumped real quick there. Um, not everyone can pull off 18 karat yellow gold. Oh, yes, they can. They're just dress halfway decently, you can absolutely wear. So it is not that in the face. I mean, it just looks elegant. It just looks nice. People that don't know are probably just going to think it's gold plated. I mean, people that are not in the know, they're not going to put two and two together, but you know, people that respect nice things tend to notice nice things. So there you go. Uh, let's see. The guts have gotten bigger, but the clothes have gotten tighter. Not a good situation there. Um, Got to get ready for work. Bye, you all. Tom, have a great rest of the show. Um, what did we tell you about troll comments, Ron? Uh, let's see here. Um uh, let's see. It's a dictatorship, Ron. Craig is the boss. Uh, well, it looks like the wrench gang are the boss here. It looks like they're hitting him with the wrench left and right. Uh, we don't appreciate you implying that guests on this channel are registered are registered felons. Hmm. I, I don't think we've had any guests on here like that. But anyway, um, let's see. Ron, it. It isn't anti-fun. It's anti-troll. Uh, yeah, let me know. If Ron is misbehaving, we'll just block him from the channel if he's going to be a pain in the you-know-what. We don't need we don't need sideshows here. Uh, you ever see Ernest, scared, stupid? Uh, we are fighting trolls. Um, Eduardo, are you still doing the unboxing? Okay, yeah. Well, I'm way behind on my, obviously, on my... Uh, if somebody was going to buy an OP today, what color dial would your first choice be? I'm way behind again on the comments. I'm trying to catch up. Da, 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 da. You grow alligators by feeding them trolls. Uh, let's see here. Um, ch -ch -ch. Keep going here. Craig, with a work from home, dress watches are on the out. No arguing that. Well, here's the thing, folks. <clears throat> if if most people are dressing like bums, it makes it that much easier for you to stand out when you dress nice. So don't look a gift horse in the mouth, right? If a whole bunch of people are dressing like bums, and for example, let's say you go, heaven forbid, you go on a job interview. Uh, you know, I would rather you be an entrepreneur and have your own business. But let's say you go on a job interview and you could make an argument that every time I go and meet with a client or whatever, it's like a job interview, right? They're, they're, they're my boss. All my clients, hundreds of them that I have, they're, they're basically all my boss. So here's the thing. If you go and you meet with them or whatever and you're dressed decently and everybody else they met with that day they were all dressed like slobs it gives you a competitive advantage <laughs> you know so think of that as a plus that everybody else dresses like bums that doesn't it's not a good idea for you to dress like them and be just like them i mean don't you want to be in the upper echelon don't you want to be a, a cut above what do you think about that
And even back in the day when a lot of people dressed nice, if you bought a, a particularly nice suit, and a particularly nice tie, a particularly nice shirt, you could still stand up, stand out above them because they'd be wearing a lousy suit and a lousy shirt and a lousy tie. So, and, and shoes also, a lot of them skimped on the shoes, right? So you can, you can always try to step up above all the competition, right? Nowadays, it's just a lot easier because they dress like bums. So, yeah, I mean, why not? dress a little bit nicer take it up to an, to another level and uh and have that edge let's see um da, 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 da. let's keep going here uh archie does know a lot about watches whatever you think of him there you go yeah it's a shame about archie because oh who's this calling in Oh, no, that's got a decline. That's a scammer. Um, it's a shame about Archie because he is knowledgeable. He is a decent entertainer. If he would have kept the profanity under control and kept the trolls under control, he could have probably gotten some really good corporate sponsors. He could have probably made some money. He, he might even be working for Watchbox now, you know, and, and, and getting paid like his nemesis is getting paid. Uh, so he had he had a real opportunity, and I think he kind of squandered that um, with the way he handles himself and, and, uh, and his buddies. Uh, he, he did start that channel, Archie Corporate or whatever, I guess, to try to address that, but that ain't going to work because people can just go and see some of his other videos and they're like, man, I don't want to be associated with this. And so they're not, they're not going to, uh, they're not going to give him money. <clears throat> so yeah, so he's, he's basically got a scrape and claw for whatever he gets. And it's a shame because he is a talent and he is smart. But that's, that happens with a lot of folks. A lot of folks screw up. Um, let's see here. Brett's in the house. Um, Let's keep going here. Uh, uh, maybe, the, okay. You can't beat Seiko Loom for the money? Okay. I owned a fake Daytona. Craig, check your email I sent you last night about this forum post on some tutors. Yeah, I, I, I went, but I, I, I'm not a member of that forum, so they wanted me to log in and all that stuff, so I couldn't see it, and I didn't bother to go through all that hassle. But I can imagine, yeah, tutors are, are a mess. We support Megan's Law and Craig's Law. I don't even know what Megan's Law is. What is Megan's Law? <clears throat> Craig, I sent you a photo. <laughs> oh, geez. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what we got here. Let's see what Lance sent. Um, yeah, that's that's okay. I, I'm not I'm not a fan of the again lugs that are just kind of like stuck on a case like that that don't like meld into the case that aren't curved into the case. Uh, so yeah, it wouldn't really be my wouldn't really be my cup of tea. I'm going to I'm going to get through these comments here and we're going to wrap this puppy up. Eduardo's in the house. I'm going to take the new Rolex to my watchmaker and the store it was originally sold in to verify auth authenticity. <clears throat> I'm pretty sure that's the, a real watch, but yeah, you might want to have somebody look at it if they're willing to do that. Carlos is in the house. Uh I thought Eduardo was a troll. No, it looks like he's not, Brent. Um, half the wrenches are trolls. Uh oh. Some high profile, some high profile trolls behave very well here. There you go. Um, absolutely, Craig. It pays off well to dress well and speak well. As shallow as it seems, it's just the truth. It's not shallow. It shows that you have discipline and that you care about detail and so on and so forth. It shows a lot of character traits 
that that person that might want to do business with you is is going to appreciate. So, you know, it shows that you care about some things and you, and you respect them. When you dress nice, you're not necessarily doing it for yourself. You're doing it to show respect for the people that you're dealing with. You know, I, I try to dress halfway decently for these shows out of respect for the people that might ultimately watch this video. You know, why, why would I dress like a bum? And, and th that's not respectful. So yeah, I, I think it um, I, I think it shows uh, some qualities that that uh, would make somebody want to do business with you. Let's see here, uh, and you don't have to go overboard. Just wear a nice shirt, nice belt, nice shoes, nice pair of khakis, and and right there, if you just do that, you're like way above most of the other bums out there. Uh, so let's say here, the forum post was a guy buying the exact same Tudor brand new in two different colors because he loved it so much. That's a shame. Uh, no, no puppy is getting wrapped up in my company, Williams Watches. Um, he respects animals. Let's see, save, um, save the puppy. Okay. Uh, I was getting ready to read that one and it was... So somebody, somebody, Ron was timed out. Triforce Rich uh, retracted his message. All right, I think we're about done. And let's do a close up of the stunner. Stunner alert on the channel. Let's see if I can get this in focus. It's hard. Okay, right about there is in focus. Look at that second hand. Yeah. Uh,. Craig, I sent you an email contains picture of the 30, 34 mil alongside the 36. Okay, we'll try to pull that up before we wrap this puppy up. We'll try to pull that up. See what people think. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Hey, zoom in a little bit on that. Give me a second here. And there they are. There they blow. Side by side picture. Yep. I like them both. I prefer the date just, but yeah, I think they're both cool. They're both cool, cool pieces. It's interesting that they're both a, basically a steel and gold watch, and both have steel bracelets. So they both have had the re the bracelets replaced. Okay, Derek's in the house. Um, there's plenty more to go over. You shouldn't dress well because other people don't dress decently. That reflects a lack of of creative or confident thinking. No, 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 Chi Down. You got it wrong. It's a competitive environment out there. You want any edge you can get over competitors. And if the fact that you're dressing nice gives you a competitive edge over all those yamokes out there, uh, that's a good thing. You want a competitive edge. And for example, let's say you're driving a reliable car so that you show up on time because your car didn't break down, right? That's a competitive edge. If you have the right equipment to get the job done, and let's say you need some wireless microphones or whatever, and you've got ones that work without interference and without crappy audio, I mean, that's a competitive advantage. You want every competitive advantage you can get Trust me, you do. No reason not to take competitive advantages when you can. Okay, just pop back in. Tom, pop back in. Craig, where can I get a brand new day date? Brett in the house. Uh, you might be able to call an AD and they would ship it to you. Even though most of them are closed, I think they can still ship a watch. Call Colonial Jewelers here in Frederick. Colonial Jewelers here in Frederick, Maryland and see, talk to Sarah and tell Sarah that I, um, I told you to call and I think she'll work with you. Uh, let's see, uh, Mike's in the house, that O2 is such a stunner. You're still GS, have to uh, referred by another adjective. Yeah, I hear you. No need to time Ron out for asking questions about animal cruelty. Hey again, pal. Okay. Um, Dan's calling. 
I better decline that. I, I'm going to wrap this up, and then I'll call him back. That's a client. Okay. We, uh, we need a live stream explaining why Tudor is terrible. If, if, if I need to explain that to you, then I don't know if I can help you or not, Lance. I, I think that you might be beyond help. Um, let's see. I don't like Tudor's hour hand. Well, duh. <laughs> now, the older ones, some of them had the Mercedes hand on them. Those were okay. But that hand that they've put on a lot of them recently is ugly. A lot of things about Tudor's is ugly. They wanted to make them a little bit ugly so that you would buy the Rolex instead. It's a wannabe watch. It's a it's a total fail. Bob's watch is a watt box crown and caliber. Okay. Uh, uh, Brett Brett says thank you, Craig. Okay. Um, ADs won't ship anymore. You have to buy in person at any Rolex dealer. Well, but most of them are shut down right now, Rich. So what what can he do? If they're shut down, I don't know how he can do that. I'd call Sarah and see what she has to say, though. Um, all right. I'm going to wrap this puppy up. It's been real. It's been a lot of fun. It's been an hour and a half. And uh, that's how that works. So I'm going to pull up this app so that I can shut this puppy down. Shut it down. And be sure to click subscribe and click on the little bell. And by the way, Bitcoin is pumping. Let's take one last look at Bitcoin before we wrap this puppy up. Bitcoin has been pumping. It's up over $9,300 according to that. So that is pretty, pretty wild. Everybody have a good one. We'll hopefully see you again tomorrow.